Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, we're excited to check it out Snail Sprint from Hobby Games. This is for two to four players, age is five plus. Take it, I don't know, about 15, 20 minutes to play. And in Snail Sprint, you're going to be getting a card. You're going to be getting a betting card, which is going to tell you the three color snails that you want to win the race. So you will have to make sure you get those snails pumped up and get those snails moving around the board and also over this metal tin right here as the snails are going to have magnets on them and they're going to be crawling over the board which your kids are going to think is really stinking cool uh and once three snails have finished you'll reveal your cards and see who has the most victory points it's light it's simple but is it good let's open it up i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of snail sprint so first and foremost we have a handy dandy rule booklet it's about seven eight pages double-sided full color full pictures illustration examples actually five pages very well done should have you up and running in no time at all so the first thing you'll notice is yes the box actually is uh, part of the game and the metal tin is part of the game as you'll see which actually turns out to be really cool so in snail sprint each player is going to get one of these cards which will have the three snails that you would like to win the game so you're not actually controlling a snail yourself you're just picking uh well you're kind of picking and choosing which ones you want to move to obviously get the most points if you're in first place you're going to get three points for your snail second place two points third place one point so ideally you get all three on there you're going to win the game every time now, how does it work? Well, you're going to start by putting all these snails down here on the beginning spot and then choosing whether you're not whether you want board A or board B. So it is double sided. A is for a little bit of a younger crowd. And on your turn, what are you going to do? You're going to roll the dice. And it's really quite simple. You're going to have two choices. I could either move the orange snail to the pink space or I can move the pink snail to the orange space. So I'd look at my card and I'd say, well, I want both of those things to happen. But if I do the uh, pink snail to the orange space, I'm going to be able to go a lot further which is great. So now the next player would go and maybe they want to move green. So they'll go green to the pink space and boom. And then it gets back to me. So let's see what I got. I got blue onto the orange space, orange onto the blue space, which wow, blue onto the orange space would be wow. There is no orange space. Now, another thing that's really interesting about this game is this space is now covered. So this is now actually a green space and this is now actually a pink space until that snail moves. So let's see what would happen. This blue one would actually get to go boop, 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 all the way to the next orange, which is where now you need to look at the side of the box, which the next orange would be right there. Now, what's also nice is it's also on the other side. So they match. So this, so even if you can't see the side over here, you can still see what's on the inside right there. Uh, really clever design right there. Really clever design. But he, now since he has a magnet on the side, is going to be right there. So as you can see, they're crawling up over the box. Really cool usage of the box. So we got, uh, oh, good example. So we have green to yellow, which means, or yellow to green, which now means the green is stuck there. The green cannot move until that yellow moves off of the top of him. So you can kind of block people. Now, obviously, once you're on the side right here, that's not going to work because gravity and, uh, unfortunately, the top of the snail's heads are not metal, even though that would be really stinking cool. So if you have to land on top of someone's head, you would actually just, boom, go one space in front of them when you're on the outside of the tin. Eventually, what's going to happen is someone is going to, woo, get to the first place spot. And if you do that, that color is going to get three points. So let's just say this has happened. First, second, third, uh, look at the card. This person would have done actually pretty well. So they would have gotten three points for having the yellow, two points for having the orange. They'd have five points. It'd be a pretty solid score. Only one other minor rule that I do want to mention is that if it's, uh, for some reason, no one can move. So let's say you roll uh, right now purple and yellow. Well, yellow's already finished, so they can't move, and purple's locked right there, so they could not move. That just means the person who's in last place gets to move forward one space. Really interesting mechanism, which I actually kind of liked a lot. But there you go. That's what you're going to be doing inside of Snail Sprint. Alrighty then, Snail Sprint from Hobby Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. Uh, first of the con side, two-four players, uh, uh, somewhat restrictive player count. Another con that I had with the game was most of the times the decisions you're going to make are going to be relatively simple, which I think is going to lead to kids outgrowing this a little bit faster than you might want it to when they start to get to uh, games that have a little bit more choices. Because this one, every turn at most, you have two choices. And sometimes those choices are very, very obvious. Oh, it's orange and whatever other color, I have orange, so I'm obviously going to pick orange. You know, I don't have that other color. So some of the times the choices are a little bit simple, but... 
It's a children slash family game, so obviously that's going to happen. Now that being said, I do feel like there was a definite missed opportunity in this game, uh, in the variants, to make it a my first game, like an ages two plus style game, and just make it so that you're trying to get just your cards into the top three. And I think if I was actually ever going to play it with younger kids than my son, and I played it with a three-year-old, and he, he enjoyed the game a whole heck of a lot, it's going to tell you in the pros, but I think if I was going to play with a two-year-old, I, I think if you are in the market for uh, my first two-year-old line, this is one you might want to consider with the house rule is just making so you're trying to get your snails there and so they still get that idea of roll the two dice do you move the purple one or the yellow one so let's look at our card oh we have purple we should move the purple one little stuff like that more of a minor nitpick than anything obviously you can do it yourself moving on to the pros i really enjoyed the snail sprint i thought it was really stinking cool when she first taught us the game at uh origins i saw the snails crawling over the metal i was like what that is so cool and then i saw like the ingenious graphic design on the outside or the inside outside of the box uh that matches so you'll be able to see where you are even if you can't like crane your neck to do it i like that an awful lot i would have liked it that's another con minor nitpick i wish there was maybe some metal on their head so they would still like even be crawling on top of each other when they're in the box but whatever still a really great family game uh my three-year-old really enjoyed it my six-year-old really enjoyed it played in my class the kids liked it a good deal that being said they are uh the kids that i was playing with were about nine ten years old and i could tell that this was a little too light for them but if you kids age i'm gonna say two i'm gonna say if you're willing to house rule it two to maybe eight years old i think this is gonna be a really solid hit in your house and i know this one's gonna be my house for quite a while because my three-year-old is really obsessed with this game at the moment that is snail sprint from hobby games if it looks like it might be your cup of tea be sure to check that one out if you're enjoying what i'm doing please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below if you support the channel click on that little amazon associates link down below uh buy anything on amazon throws a couple of pennies my way and in the comments below let me know what is your greatest like what's the thing that if, if your your wife husband boyfriend girlfriend if you buy it for yourself put it in the fridge put it in the freezer it does not last the night. Like, what's that thing? What's that thing that you're absolutely just like, oh, that's all gone. For me personally, it's ice cream. I have such a hard time with ice cream. Anytime anybody puts anything in the ice cream, like, like when I buy ice cream for my family, this is so terrible. I secretly buy two of them. So that way, I can eat a whole bunch of ice cream and not have to share it. But then I don't touch their box. Like, I don't touch it. I'm like, that's their box. I don't touch it. Yeah, I'm terrible. I got a problem with sweets. Let me know in the comments below. You got any foods like that? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. This is a fast-paced race of snail insanity.